Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. Guys, we're playing Disney's Aladdin, made by Capcom and licensed by Nintendo. Let's get started. This is another one of those nostalgic games for me. All of these are really going to be kind of nostalgic. That's the whole reason why I started this series in the first place. Capcom came out with a bunch of really super good Disney licensed games for Nintendo as a third party affiliate back in the 90s. So that relationship was pretty strong and they came out with a lot of super good content. We're already two thirds of the way through the different games that I'm playing and Mega Man, Aladdin, both Capcom made games very good. That thing that we just captured was a sailcloth. As you can see throughout this first stage of this marketplace, we are collecting a bunch of gems and there are, are apples spilling out from that pot. Apples are our projectile of choice. You can use those to stun enemies. We have a finite amount of them. We have 28 now, but they're pretty easy to, to grab when you pick up one from a pot. Apparently, you know, three will spill out, but I guess that somehow means like 10. I, I don't know. Maybe Aladdin has Jesus S qualities. He can turn an apple into 10 apples. He would be loved by farmers around the world. There's a free one up. And we've got archers trying to attack us and ruin our day like a bunch of turds. In this game, there's blue gems, there's red gems. The blue gems are lesser than the red ones. I don't quite know what everything adds up to and amounts to. I know that the red ones, if you collect a certain amount, there's like a bonus level at the end of each stage that you can, or like a bonus you can do. I think it's like a, like a slot machine for more lives, something like that. So I'm gonna try to get as many as I can see. Once again, these are not completionist runs. I don't have 100% memory of where things are or how to avoid getting hit by very basic enemies in this game. So my muscle memory is hazy. It's not as good as it used to be, but I'm doing my best for you guys, for the fans. Except for right there. So first death of the run, about two minutes in, so we're doing great. Nothing like coughing it up already. But yeah, this game is... It scales in difficulty. These early Capcom games were just so well made. And... They... Have a very steep learning curve that is very rewarding if you can get good. But in general, this game is... I would say it's above average in difficulty. It's not too bad. But as we play further into this game, and as I get hopefully better, you'll soon see that this game gets pretty brutal. It's not quite as difficult as its Lion King counterpart of the Capcom Disney tie-in variety, but man, it, uh, it has its moments. It's super well made though. I think part of the thing that drew me to games like this is how much I love platformers. That's kind of always been my thing. I started out playing Super Mario All-Stars is like my first game collection. My first game ever was Super Mario 2. So platformers in general have always just been kind of the genre of games that I cut my teeth on. Which is a weird phrase, but I'll allow it. Makes my, uh, makes the skin on my teeth itch. That's also a weird phrase. Old people say strange stuff. So platformers, always been a big fan of them as a kid and I've just been drawn to them. A lot of early 90s games that were some of the best ones on the Super Nintendo were platformers. And I think the reality of that is just the limitations of the technology. I know that 3D platforming became very robust with the 64, but that's a nice amount of apples. Oh, I ruined it. So yeah, I know that platforming in general was just very prevalent for that era of of games, and I'm thankful for it because I really enjoyed it. I think that there's a ton of quality stuff that was made, especially by like the third party affiliates that were making content for Nintendo back then. I know that Nintendo is a studio that gets, you know, frequently panned for, or not studio, a company that gets frequently panned for not endorsing and using independent studios as often. They try to keep a lot of their AAA stuff in-house, which is fine. They have some of the biggest franchises in the world. You know, your Marios, your Pokemons, your Zeldas. So it's not for without reason that they do that, but 
it's just unfortunate that uh, it's not quite as prevalent because games like this, I know Capcom's not small potatoes or anything. Let's give Capcom their due. That's a big company. But these, these games are just so fun and so well polished. Like the sprite work is beautiful. There's some amazing looking backgrounds that they've developed here. The gameplay itself is pretty darn good. I don't have a ton of complaints for this game in general. The big takeaway is just that if you're not, if you're having trouble with this game, it's probably user error than anything. It requires a lot of muscle memory and practice and tries. If this is a game that you played by borrowing it from the internet, I can understand why you might save state it. Or if this ever becomes a game that's available on Switch Online that you you do some rewinds. I could totally see it. It's tough to get everything to be a completionist while also just not dying. Because this game ramps up fast. This first stage is not bad. They let you get your feet wet. They let you kind of get used to it. It's like a bit of a tutorial section. But even still, you know, this is not... This is not Baby's first tutorial stage. It's got some it's got some meat to it. It's got some it's kind of thick, you know. So I enjoy it. Thankfully the game is early on generous with the with the uh the one-ups. But I'm sure I will burn through those very quickly as I've done on my practice runs. It's just it's just one of those situations where you you think you're there on an edge, or on a ledge, or there's an enemy that you think you've just missed, and nine times out of ten, you're right. But then there's gonna be that one time where it will catch you by surprise. Catch you with your pants down. I don't know if there's ever been like a reverse of that phrase where people say like, if something bad happens to you, it's, hey, you got caught with your pants down. I don't know if that's meant to be like inappropriate or like an adult reference, but Where's the positive side of that? Like, where's somebody saying, hey, I caught you with your pants up? Like, if you did something good at work, like, hey, look at you. Your pants were up when I caught you. You know, why don't we, why don't we flip it to the positive? Why are we not thinking of, like, the good things? Everybody's always so negative. But anyway, back to the game. I'm trying to collect as many of these red gems and blue gems as I can. I believe the amount of gems you get is something that is dependent on the lives you get. So there's a bonus for red gems, and I believe blue gems 100 will net you a life. I could be wrong, but that's just what my muscle memory is telling me without looking it up. Probably not going to try to sneak too many peeks at a walkthrough in this one. I just want to play it as is. These early games, these Nintendo ones from my nostalgia, I'm trying to kind of preserve that early going 90s feel that I had. So here's a tricky red gem. This one is meant to be a little sneaky snake. I wasn't really sure how to get this one at first, but it appears that these little swinging platforms, you can also use your sailcloth to jump onto. A sailcloth for your sailcloth. Yeah, so once again, the prequel to Breath of the Wild actually is an Aladdin game. Pretty incredible. But we are almost done with this first stage. It's not too bad. It's one of the more fun ones. There's a red gem that I missed because I'm a ding dong and more blue gems that I didn't get. You can jump off that um, that sliding cloth there and catch yourself with your your own sailcloth. I would believe that would be a zip line. I totally forgot what that was called in the moment. Ignore me. If you haven't actually ever been to a zip line, it's pretty fun. There's a few a few. There's a few zipline companies in my area that have these entire sections of the forests kind of roped off with these cool platforms and you can get a good view of nature and the area around you. So here we go. This is the shopkeeper. He's our first boss. He is immune to apples. So he is not as like a doctor. An apple a day will not keep him away. It actually will make him quite mad. He'll get very slashy. So you gotta wait till he gives you the chop, then you jump on his back. It's kind of impressive if you think about it. Aladdin and him are about the same size. He might look like he has a little spina bifida from his old age. 
but Aladdin can jump up and over him and land on his head. So Aladdin has some incredible hops, and we'll be seeing him in the NBA before too long. But that was it, guys. That's the first stage. We rescued our damsel in distress and her burlap sack, and we will run away with Apu, who was doing some great fighting motions for us to encourage us. So that's the first stage, everybody. We did it. Not too bad. Pretty great. That was Super Nintendo Sundays, guys. I've been D-Mike, and I'll see you next time. Bye.